Hello, my name is Zach Littlepage, and I'm going to be doing a uh, brief tuning clinic on how to maintain, uh, tune, wax, and just keep your skis uh, in great shape for your ski season. So with this uh, Chamonix uh, 97, um, we have a 97 millimeter waist. We're going to be tuning this ski with a two degree side edge bevel which will be a nice uh, crisp edge, but be very durable. It'll take impacts from rocks and it'll last day to day. This is a really good uh, standard factory spec on uh, your side edge bevel. The base bevel, we're going to be doing at a one degree. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the brakes out of the way. Uh, the easiest way to do that was with a rubber band. Press down on the brake, with the back, and hoop, hoop it over the top. Then I turn the ski over and I adjust my bench. I bring the toe piece of the binding right here up underneath the clamp part of the uh, vise. This allows you to grab any width ski from a race ski all the way up to the widest powder skis with any vise that you have. So Swix and Toco have the best bevel guides in the business. What these do is provide the slant on the file and keep it consistent so that you get a nice even um, pull across the edge and have a consistent edge angle uh, for the file. So you can see here we have a 0.5, a 1.5, and a one degree base bevel guide. All your files will fit right into these. For these all mountain skis, I'm gonna be doing a one degree base bevel. So I'm gonna take my 100 grit diamond stone, I'm going to put it in my one degree base bevel guide. I'm gonna hold it flat against the base and I'm going to hold pressure, not heavy, but just real slight, uh, right up directly above the uh, edge here. With the diamond stone at this point, we don't have to be concerned about direction of pull. So you can hear as I pull this across, you can hear that rough sound, that is damage on the ski. And that's what we're looking to make go away. So now I've taken the case hardening off of the edge. It's ready for the file. I'll use an, a uh, nice clean paper towel to remove any of the uh, debris left over, filing, shavings, and other dirt. I'll now move to what's called a bastard file. We want to start off of where the ski uh, initially contacts the snow. Um, as Tomorrow, hopefully, will be a real deep powder day. Snow effect hits and is pressured by the ski um, all over the ski. So you want to make sure the edge is very even. What you'll find out a lot is that bevels aren't addressed up off the contact points of the ski, and this makes the ski very erratic. So this is one of the things I always check for. So I'll go up top, and you can hear a nice, solid bite of the file using nice, smooth, overlapping strokes to pull the material back on the ski to get this established. So now that we've gone through with our bastard file, we'll move to a little finer file. This will cut a little smoother and give you a little bit more um, consistent edge. So we'll go back through with what's called the second cut file. And again, this will only be one or two passes at the most. We're going to go back to a, a finer diamond stone. Again, I'm gonna go with the circle style, just a little bit more durable. I just like the results a little better. So now your base edge is established, it's polished, it's smooth, and this ski will react very consistently as it goes through different snow types. The last thing I do while I have the ski in this position is I detune it and make sure that the ski is not overly sharp or beat up at the tips and tails. I do that with usually just an older bastard uh, file and I typically just go back um, a few inches from the tip of the ski and a few inches from the tail. You try to do it evenly. You definitely don't want to detune this way into the side cut of the ski. And there we go. Brush that off. And again with the tail. Now I'm just quartering that edge to make sure that 
it really disengages nice and smooth at the release of the ski. This is a, what we call is a gummy stone. It's basically like an eraser on your pencil. And this is how we polish in um, any of that detuning that we're going to do. Um, so I've come back about this far, about well, four or five inches from the tip of the ski um, with the file. And then I wanna make sure that this blends nice and easily into the, uh, the part of the ski that's going to grip and bite in the snow. So I rub at a 45 degree angle and just polish that up. Again, you want to do this evenly on both edges. I'll wipe off any of the debris that's left on the base, and we'll move to the side edge. The side edge, you always want to tune with the base facing away from you. You rest the edge in, and clamp it down. Again, you're not going to be using the center clamp here. You'll be using the clamps on the edge, uh, the supports of the vise. We're going to repeat the same pattern. One of the things um, that you're going to have with the side edge that you didn't have with the base edge is that the sidewall can be getting in the way, which is this white material here, can get in the way of uh, the file getting to the edge and creating a nice smooth bite. We're going to use um, our panzer, our body file which is just a really, really aggressive file to help pull that back. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, uh, a very steep um, angle, in this case, a uh, 93 degree uh, side edge guide, um, which is a three degree side edge, which is more than we're gonna be using for the final edge polish. We're going to be lining this up so it strikes the uh, sidewall without going over the top of the edge. And we're gonna use a spring clip here to hold that against the guide. And then again, with nice long, even strokes, you don't have to press hard. The file should be doing the work. If you're not having the file uh, engage, or if you feel like you're having to press really hard against the, the guide, there's probably something wrong. Either your file is dull, um, or the ski is not in the right shape. So it exposes the side edge of the, uh, the metal part of the side edge so you can uh, file it with your diamond stones and your files. Just like we do at the base edge, I'm going to take a coarse um, diamond stone to knock off all the case hardening and any of the hard parts on the uh, ski. And what this does is this part of the um, guide rests against the base. This part holds the file in a nice even position so that you get a consistent presentation and angle against the edge. So I'm going to start the tip. Nice, even, overlapping strokes. I'm pressing with the diamond stone, um, mainly just as I pull it towards me and just gliding back against there. To show, you wouldn't think that that would pull off much material, but when you run that back, you can see right here the uh, material that, that that file is taken back. So then from the coarse diamond stone, I move on again to the bastard file, the coarse file. I put it at an angle. The angle is, allows the uh, cut and the angle of the uh, blades on the file to really have the best presentation to the edge to get the best cut. So you can see I put that at a little bit of an angle on the file guide. And again, I'll just draw this back. Not much pressure. You really wanna have a nice, easy, gentle pull. Now we're moving to our second cut, a little finer tooth. It's gonna make the edge a little bit sharper, a little bit smoother. And finally, to our medium or 400 grit diamond stones to get that final hone and polish. The file should sound nice and smooth and consistent with no ticks or no chips or any funny sounds. And when you pull your hand across here with your fingernail, you should be able to shave off 
your fingernail really easily on there. The last thing I'll do is I'll take our dump gummy stone again. I'll scrub the tips and tails where we've detuned it with the base filing. Run it very lightly at a 45 degree angle across the edge. This removes any of the burrs or final stuff that's hanging off the edge. And with this, you'll have a very nice, smooth, sharp, consistent edge that's going to ski really nice. And that's how you tune a ski edge. So for waxing a ski, this is a really easy thing to do. And you're going to find that this is probably the single biggest thing that you can do to keep your skis performing well in between tunes. The first thing I like to do is, again, make sure the base is clear of debris, smooth and consistent. I like to use a metal brush to do this. This happens to be a steel brush. Um, brass is also really good. This helps pull out all the dirt and oxidized base material, grease, any filings from your previous tuning and, and uh, edge sharpening that you were doing, and open up the base and make it ready to accept wax. Go back again, just wipe down the base, make sure that there's no debris on there. Have your waxing iron, you'll notice there's no holes in here. This is a digital iron, so it keeps very good control of the temperature, so you won't have any smoking or burning or flare-ups. For tomorrow's condition, we'll be using a little LF7. Has a really broad performance range, works great in high moisture, new snow. Uh, it should be perfect for tomorrow. A lot of people, there's several different techniques. Some people just like to crayon the wax on and come and iron it. Some people like to touch it to the iron, heat up a little bit, leaving a little bit more wax on there. Um, it's very important that your iron doesn't touch your base. Um, it takes a little bit more wax, but it's the difference between a wax, um, you know, using 70 cents worth of wax and 80 cents worth of wax. Just to use a little bit more wax and make sure that your iron floats really nice uh, and evenly across the ski. So what I'll do is I'll run um, a nice bead of wax up and back down the middle. and back up again on the ski. The ski hasn't been waxed a long time, so it's very, very dry. And then I will use the heat and iron to gradually melt this wax into an even film across the ski. And again, you should have a nice, even, smooth glide on your iron and a nice, even distribution of wax across the ski. If you get to a part where you're iron is starting to grab and, and bind, um, you definitely just can add some more wax. It's really easy to do. Um, and what you're looking for is a nice, consistent, even melt across the ski. What bonds the wax to your ski is the heat. So the more heat you can apply, the better the uh, wax is going to bond, the longer it's going to last and also time. The longer that you can allow the wax to sit, like over the summer when you're storing your skis and overnight when you're waxing them for the next ski day, the better the wax is going to bond, the longer it's going to last, and the faster your skis are going to be. You'll see here there's a nice little melted film of wax right behind the iron. And I just move nice and slowly across here. After about five or six passes, you're not going to get much more absorption of wax into the base. And you'll probably have found the limits of how much wax this ski will take. So this ski is looking pretty darn good here, I'd say. There's a little unevenness in the base. Like I said, this ski could use a, a pretty major full tune. Okay, so this ski has absorbed just about all the wax I think it's going to. Get a nice even layer across the ski. And we're going to let this cool for a couple minutes. Again, the longer you can let it cool, the better the bond's going to be. And then we're going to scrape and brush it out. And that's how you wax the ski.